Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now I've been talking about, um, I don't know what to title this, maybe we'll title it the most important thing or what to think about or whatever it is. The message is what's important. Jesus, I was talking yesterday and I said, Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. Now, Jesus speaking here, he said to his disciples, now he didn't leave it for them to just wander over it. He specifically said, speaking to his disciples. How do I know he's speaking to his disciples? When you go up and read from verse 7, verse 7, you know, he, he, he was talking to his disciples. Because verse 7, and they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what signs will there be when these things shall come to pass? So he was with his disciples. And he was teaching them about things that are going to come to pass. But then, after telling them all those stuff, he now said this. I pray, I don't know how I'll make this sound to you. He said, watch ye therefore and pray always. Have you prayed that today? Now, when he says pray always, not just say go on your knees, Father, please, count me worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass. It means that should be, when, when you hear Jesus say pray always, it should be your thinking pattern. It should be what fills your mind. You are sleeping, you are thinking it. That's prayer. You see, your, it becomes your wish, it becomes your thoughts, it becomes your reasoning. You know, that's why sometimes I don't, I don't get bothered about studying things about the end times. It's none of my business. I'm telling you the truth. The only reason I get concerned is to answer certain questions. But it's not for me. You know, sometimes, you know, when, 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 you, when you hear people talking about these things, I, I just ask myself, I said, this, this person is too knowledgeable about this thing. I mean, he wants the Lord to leave him behind so that he can be teaching people then how to, you know, avoid step one, step two, step three. I don't plan to be there. You shouldn't either. Praise God. You shouldn't. If you want to stay back and teach people, or you want to stay back and say, I told you, good for you. But Jesus said, he gave this instruction. If he gave the instruction, I have received it, I have taken it. He said, I should pray. And he's saying the same thing to you. If you are a child of the Lord, of, of the Lord you need to pray this prayer. And not only pray, listen. You know, the Lord was talking to me and he said, you know, the Lord asked me this question and he said, what do you think? Do you think the rapture, you know, you know all the movies we've seen about the rapture, you know, you see a, a pilot was piloting a plane and suddenly he's gone and then the plane, maybe the two pilots and co-pilots, they were both born, born again believers and then they just disappeared and then the plane, nobody to pilot the plane, the plane cra crashes, someone's driving a train, someone's... Um, at sea, someone is at um, driving a bus or something with people inside and then it, it crashes. And then the Lord asks me a question. He said, do you think that's what's going to happen? And now when the Lord asks you a question like that, if you're smart, you won't even rush to answer. I just say, okay, Lord, I know you're going to tell me something different, so I'm listening. And then the Lord said, do you think your father is that disorganized? And then the Lord said something to me. I've never thought about it. I've never heard this before. The Lord said something to me. He said, see, before the rapture happens, everyone that is going with the rapture would have been prepared and they will all be at the right place at the right time. And then he said these words to me. There is no child of God that will be flying a plane solo that day. Why? Because your father is too organized. He is just too organized to let, to let the world blame him for calamity. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if a pilot goes and then plane crashes, people die, things happen, people are dead. And then what, what, what happened? The pilot disappeared. He was taken to... And then when they get to understand that the rapture happened, so, so God took away the pilot of that plane and, and let people die. See? He's too organized for that. And then secondly, the rapture is going to be so glorious that there will be no fault pointed to it. It's something that the whole world will see. And when they sit down to think, they will see the love of God in all of it. And they will see that they just refuse to accept the love of God when it was given to them. Nobody's going to blame God for anything. 
You know, I, I've never heard that from anywhere before. So when the Lord said that to me, I said, Lord, I seriously didn't think about this. But, but it's just so true, praise God. It's just so true. You know, someone asked me this question several years ago. You know, the person said, look, what if a believer is in the act of adultery or fornication and then the, the trumpet sounds? What would be the fate of that believer? And my answer was very simple and straight. Because the Lord had given me wisdom on that. No believer going with the rapture is going to be caught fornicating or doing anything wrong when the trumpet sounds. You say, how? Oh, don't just think that the trumpet is just going to sound anyhow. Jesus is building his church and he's taking out every spot. He's taking out every blemish. So when he is done cleansing every spot of blemish from every one of us, then he will tell the father, I'm ready to present my bride. See? So it is his responsibility. So don't think the father is going to say, Angel, blow the trumpet. I'm tired of everything. Jesus, don't intercede. Blow the trumpet. No, it is Jesus that will tell the father, Father, I'm ready. See? That's what's going to happen. So no believer will be caught in iniquity on the day of the rapture. That's why I always say this. You as an individual, the question you must ask yourself, am I part of the church that Jesus is building? How do you know you're part of the church? A cleansing will be taking place in your life through his word. He will be speaking to you. He will be arranging your life. You will just notice that you're leaving things behind. You're leaving iniquities behind. You're leaving all those bad habits behind. You will just notice it. Not because someone is catching you and is warning you. No, you will just notice that your mind, even your mind, your taste buds, everything is changing. Praise God. That's how the glorious church is behaving even now. There's a cleansing taking place. I'm going to talk to you about that tomorrow. Praise God. Because I've got to stop now. Well, I'll leave you with this. Go meditate on this scripture. Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. Until tomorrow, bye-bye.